Retailer's Roadmap Cruise Control, where we navigate the roadways of life, business, and everything in between. Hey guys, it's Kevin Davis from the Cruise Control Podcast, brought to you by Detailers Roadmap. And today we're doing our kind of round two of our troubleshooting podcast. Uh, today we're here with Michael DeAndrea, and we are here with our experts, uh, Grant Menard and Barry Thiel. Hey, before I forget, if you want information about websites, SEO, and the like, go to detailersroadmap.com. Don't forget to check us out all over social media. Just search for Detailers Roadmap. So, hey guys, thanks for coming. Appreciate you guys joining me. And uh, yeah, these uh, we did one not too long ago from our you know follow up from round one. This is going to be our follow up from round two. We had originally said something like sixty days. We're at ninety days. It's just how it goes with the holidays and everything. Uh, but I think that's a good like one quarter is kind of a great you know little test to see where we're at. And honestly, like looking back at the last quarter, this is probably one of the hardest ones to implement some of this stuff and see progress. But it's also a great one, right? I think we said this before. If it's if it's a little bit of slower time in the business, it's a great time to build the business, right? So let me, I'm going to share my screen real quick, and we will do a quick review of our original numbers, and then, um, and then we'll take a look at that. Share my screen. Kevin. Uh oh, my guess. Mike looks like he's sweating. My guess is sweating a little bit. Oh, it's 70 degrees in here. It have, like, all. large shirts. Only mediums. <laughs> That's the extra medium right there. I I am currently <laughs> using a uh, a uh, newscaster trick. So can you guys see that screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah we can see. Yeah. It. Okay. Uh, what you do, Barry, is you sit on the back of your cert or jacket, and then it uh it makes everything so it doesn't bunch up. And you do like 150 push-ups a day. Those those two things are are crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can do one right, of those so, right now. There you go. Business <laughs> highlights. Uh, and again, this was three months ago, and some of these numbers were a little off anyway. I didn't go. I didn't bother to go update these um, from the original podcast. But years in business, three plus now. Team size four to seven. Forty five grand a month. Average two thousand operating costs, six thousand labor costs, four thousand material costs, seventeen hundred fixed costs. But it's right at fifty one percent margin. I can't remember what the actual number was, so Mike, you'll have to fill me in on that. Um, you're doing SEO with us and website. You post all the time on uh, Google My Business and social, and you're using you know all kinds of other things, doing ceramic coating, exterior, interior, uh, uh, PPF, and paint correction. Talked about. You're a people person, close team, and you train quickly. Lower close rate. We need to look at that process. I know you've done that. Limited space, growth potential, and leadership training and knowledge. So let me see if I can get that back out. Unshare. All right. So that's kind of where we were um, ish. And I know we'll uh, we'll we'll correct some of that kind of stuff. But hey, just give us the update. Where are we at right now? Like you said before we started, it was a uh, let's say challenging three months. Uh, and I know for, um, those of us, you know, in pretty much every space, I think it's, it, it's always a challenging time. Economics are a little bit weird right now too. So, uh, let's go. Yeah. So, uh, I pulled up my numbers for the last, you know, best three months. Uh, our highest revenue was actually December. Uh, that was at plus right under 29,000. So we did, uh, 27, 29 and 17, six. Uh, for the past three months. Um, and then, uh, hey, how's it going, buddy? Uh, go ahead and go into the shop. Uh, so uh, that's what our, our revenue was. Uh, and then on for each month, we spent about 11000 in marketing. That's going to be website, uh, SEO, uh, Hunter that we have run our ads, Google ads, Facebook ads, things like that. Uh, our payroll averaged to about 10000 a month with, with, uh, with four of us. We have four guys on our team and I have all of our payroll here. Uh, different supplies add up to about 3000 a month and some miscellaneous like QuickBooks, uh, rent, utilities, things like that, about 4000 a month. So so that would explain coming out of January, given those those numbers, why your face was a little less uh, less downtrodden than uptrodden from yeah. <laughs> from January, because that mean that means you're a little upside down in January, right? Yeah, right, right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, pulling up uh, all the numbers, we were uh, negative about seventy five hundred bucks in January. Cool. cool. What was this compared to last year, Mike? Do you have data showing last January to this January? 
So, yeah, so like I said, we did 17 six uh, for this January, and let me pull it up right now. Last January, we did 21 one, so a little bit under last right. year, actually. And what about Q4 of last year compared to this year? Well, 22 uh, I, or 22 compared to 23. Yeah, let me, let me grab that. Uh, give me a second here. All good. Barry, are you using that uh, punching bag behind you to bring out frustration, or do you the speed? Actually, it's a. I should clarify if you're not seeing this. It's a speed it's bag. A speed bag. Um, I did like. I got to get a pump to fill it up. Those things yeah, will not stay aired up. I have nah. never. I've had like five of them, and they always are are not. Uh, yeah, but no, I can't use up. it to answer your question now. Nice. All right, Mike, you ready? Michael, you ready? Uh, I pulled up like the booking report that I can see. So it kind of shows me the total of those three months uh, from November, sure. December, and January was 50,000 total. Last year? Yeah. Uh, for, for those, for those three months. For 2022? Yeah, 2022 or 23? Wait. Uh, I think what Grant's wanting to do is like. Yeah. 2022 to 2023. And you want, you want the entire year? 20, no, uh, I think what yeah. we want to do is try to compare what your numbers were 2022 wise to 2023 yeah. of that same period. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So the total dollars booked is fifty thousand, and the average booking was seven fifty three for 2022. Okay. Oh, so you're going to be above that. Yeah. Let's see. Twenty grand. Let's see. So then, if we go back to current data. Yeah, because you said uh, 29, 26, and 17. Yeah, so that would be a total of average of 25,000, bringing the, the total to 72,000 for those three months. Nice. I mean, that's, that's so awesome. That's, that's, like a, that's like a 50. So that's, I love that Grant asked that question because it's a great way to put things into perspective. Like that's 50% growth from 2022 to 2023, right? Like even though it's painful to see that negative 7,500, that's yeah. a great benchmark to say, hey, and there, look, there's a smile. He's got a smile on his face now. So we've, we've done our job. See you next time. That's um, it. That's it. <laughs> Adios. <laughs> but no, I think that's great. And anybody else that's listening, like sometimes you need to look at things. It's, it's easy to look things in, the, in a vacuum. But then if you don't look at the trends over time, it can be super frustrating. Um, and so looking, looking at things over time is a great, great way to go. So what else you got, Grant? I know you're about to ask another question. Yeah, well, that, it, it's a great question. So, 20, you know, you've had a, a almost 50% growth in one year. This is very isolated to those three months, obviously. But what, right. if you're able to go back to 2022 and then look at 2023, what would you say were some of the things that you've done or put into place that's really generated that extra 50% of revenue? Me being here because uh, I wasn't full time uh, in 2022. So now that I was, I was able to go full time in February, um, you know, I have more time to focus on the business, more time to do the things that I want to do, um, more time to push the things that I want to push instead of, you know, doing half my time at a day job, half my time here. So just being able to actually focus and, and getting it done. That's, that's it. Just putting the work in. That's, that's you. Very thinking. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, no, listen, no I'm good. I, I'm ha I'm actually happy to see that you got both feet in finally, man. Um, I, I I I know that's a hard decision. I remember when I, I went through it twice in my lifetime. You know, being an entrepreneur. The first time was when I started a detail shop. The second time was when I closed a successful detail shop and started a brand of products. You know what I mean? The, that that decision's hard. And the, the fact that you were able to come in and make a 50% increase like that is actually, it's something you should be proud of, to be honest with you. you no, know, I, we, I, I definitely am. Yeah, because we, we, and I know Grant's a numbers guy, and he's going to kill me for this one, you know, but we, when I look at business in general, I, I try to look at my quarters and my months as battles. You know what I mean? Mm. Everybody wants to win a war, but they don't want to go through the battles to get there, if that makes sense. And you're going to lose one eventually, you know, you're going to win one. You're going to lose it. It happens. It's business in general, though. You made a 50% increase. You're working by yourself now. Well, you're self-employed with, right. with a team. You know, that's what I meant by, by working by yourself. And you had a 50% increase. Dude, kudos to you, man. That's, that's, it's impressive. It's, 
I think for what's going to happen is you'll see eventually, though, that you're, you're going to have a projection where you begin to plateau and you get content and complacent. Right. Oh, I'm by myself. I'm working. Things are going smooth. That's when I get scared because when people get content, they get lazy, you know, and they just they don't do what they should be doing. They're not upkeeping and constantly growing. But dude, kudos to you, man. You, it's been 11 months now on your own. I mean, really, almost a year, actually. It, you know, yeah. I was looking at the last year. But you're you're a year in on your own. You're making money. Business is growing. You're doing well. You've got the right things in place, dude. I'm I'm impressed. I'm happy to see that, man. I really am. Good job. Thank you. Seriously. Thank so you. Nice. Out of that. Yes, that's we're in a business where everyone likes to compare to one another, right? We're in the industry where everyone's like, oh, I'm co- going to compare my numbers to another person. So the average re- revenue growth of a company in the United States year over year is 15 to 25 percent. Which everyone's like, 15 percent? That's not a lot. That's a ma- that's a major, especially when you're getting closer in, in those seven figure numbers. So you've you've doubled that. And now again, we're isolating this to one, to you know, one 90 day period. Well, and it's like the worst 90 day period. So I would, yeah, I would venture to say yeah. that if you look at, you know, at the year as a whole, we're, we're probably doing better than that. But. So I, actually, I yeah. just went in and I looked at 2022 income versus 2023 income. Uh, there was a 64% growth year over year. Dope. Yeah. That's awesome. Woo. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Sick. All right. Now, that's now that's a little, Mike that's Reed. a little yeah. bit better than 15% of the average. A little bit. A right? little bit. So. Yeah. Grant, sorry, you going I interrupted you. No, now now the cool part about this, Mike, is now that you're now that you know you can you can grow the business and you can get more customers in the door, the next step for you is okay, now how do I keep this money? Okay, because revenue dude, I'll never forget when I made a million bucks and I was like, Oh my god, we did a million dollars and I lost money. Okay. It was the hardest thing to ever like I went for that, oh I want a million dollars right now, I want a million bucks. I hate it. And it was the biggest like punch in the gut. Because we had lost money that year, and that's why, that was why this is why I became a numbers guy. I, sp- I legitimately became a numbers guy overnight because I had a million dollar business that was losing me. I was, like I was non sexy as that, so I changed my whole mindset. I said instead of instead of revenue generating a million dollars, I want to profit a million dollars. Mm-hmm. And if you do one point three million and profit a million, that's awesome because the revenue doesn't matter. It's all about profitability. So overnight, I became a numbers guy, which is kind of where I'm sure this this conversation and conversation moving forward. Is how does Mike get to say get to keep some of that 64% revenue growth in your pocket? And really understanding what that that so if so you're at 17 income and what what was the number? So 75. That's 24,000 almost 25 grand monthly expenditures, right? Like all your overhead labor and everything, I think is probably what is pretty close to what you said. Yeah. Marketing so payroll th- and the supply is about 24,000. Yeah. Grant, you're being the numbers guy. You want to kind of break some of that down and let's see if we can find some, let's yeah. see if we can find some more profit in that. Cause that seems, that seems high to me. Um, but it's high for let's this just time. break, yeah, maybe high, we can break it down. Yeah. It's high, but it all depends. You know, it's, again, this is, so I always saying like, I've been saying this for years. Everyone always gets afraid of the winter months. Okay, so if you can break even in the winter months or just lose a little bit, you're well ahead of the game. If you're not just yeah. hemorrhaging cash during these winter, winter months, you're so ahead of the game. It's not funny. Losing seventy five hundred bucks in a month is tough, but it's not tough when you made thirty grand in June, July, and August right, each month. So don't ever look. Everyone's always not everyone. It's very common in the industry. Everyone's worried about the now. Already be looking six months down the line. Okay, what's June, July, and August going to produce for us? The now is already in the past. You're seventy five hundred bucks. That was already decided in August when you didn't focus on the on the winter months. So I keep things really simple and easy whenever looking at a business or talking about a business when it comes to how to profit. It's called the one 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 method. Okay, so it's thirty percent goes to uh, labor, your two team. Thirty percent goes to expenses, and thirty percent goes to profitability. Goes to the team. Dollar goes into the products, the shop, everything else. Look at that. There's some balloons for you. And then the dollar goes, <laughs> and then the dollar stays in the bank. And it's a really easy conversation to have with your team as well. Because now it's it's opening up. It's, hey, every dollar I give to you, the business is also going to profit a dollar. Dollar goes to you, dollar goes to the products, and keeping the business running. And then the dollar is actually profitability. So your goal 
should be to look at what you're, it all comes down, typically it comes down to what you're actually charging the customer. And if your cost is $3,000 for coding, a thousand bucks should be going to your language force, a thousand bucks goes to profitability, and a thousand bucks goes to actual products and managing and running that shop. Does that make sense? Yep. So you, you have to track it. There's going to be a lot of trackers there on what's each person producing within the shop. So in our shop, people get paid based off what they produce, not how good they are or what, how much of an expert they are or anything else. So if someone produces 150 grand a year, they're going to make about 50,000. Someone produces 600,000 a year, they're going to make about 200 grand. Someone produces 1.5 million, they're going to make about a half million. Okay, because it's dollar in, dollar out. They make a half million, so does the company. Okay, but the cool part is when you have 10, 15, 20 employees, and each employee is <laughs> making a dollar. Now, if you pay if you pay a million dollars out in labor, well, you should be keeping about a million dollars in profitability as well, as long as you have three million plus in revenue. So that's that's like a very you know high mind thinking. It's never going to be perfect like that. But for you looking at you know this thirty grand, you should be shooting for if we have a twenty what about twenty eight thousand dollar a month. And expenses that, that the business is going for, that's with labor. You should be shooting for be 14, like a $52,000 a month uh, should be what you're kind of shooting for every single month. And that will, that will generate a ton of profitability. For you. Now, Mike, are you on the payroll? Is that payroll including yeah. you? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah, so this is the business too. So it's great. So I love when people put themselves in payroll because you've got to treat yourself just like everybody else. You're an employee just like them. You deserve bonuses. You also deserve to get written up, right? You also deserve to take vacations, but sometimes you have to come in early and stay late as well. So you're, you're employed by the company, just like everybody else and your job, you have to define your job roles. I defined my roles as I'm going to be the CFO of this company and I'm going to make sure that it's as profitable as possible. And when it is profitable, I'm going to bonus myself out. If it's not profitable, I'm going to look at myself in the mirror and, and decide, is, is that the job I, I truly deserve? Okay, so really look at yourself when you're looking at your business, Mike, and say, okay, I work for this business. It's my job. What is my job title? You hire yourself at that job. You're paying yourself currently, just like everybody else. So you have to hold yourself to the same standard as every single person on your team. It's no longer your company. It's all of your company, every single person there. And you're all growing towards that angle. Now, when, cool. when you when you first started, did you always have like the same mindset? Like, because in in my head, I, you know, I've always always worked for bigger companies, right? Um, like, I worked for a, a grocery store, a big chain, and all that. And then um, I did work for my brother. It was a small business. We had about fifty employees, um, and so we would do like huddles and stuff like that. And did you ever implement anything like that when you had a small team? Like, like you know, because we have four guys here. Do you have you ever ever implemented that? My struggle is like I want to grow and expand, and I just want to set the groundwork uh, for everybody to understand what needs to happen every day. And like I don't want to have to come in and like wait wait around for things to happen. And like they should know what they're doing, and they do, but it's just getting the framework down of making them realize, you know, I guess yeah. how the way things should work. You're talking like morning morning meetings. And quarterly yeah. meetings, like going over yeah. to, yeah, 100%. I've been doing that since day one. Yeah. Because, uh, Mike, what you have, your thought there was, oh, they should be getting the shit done. Okay. That's your thought. Oh, they should be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But if you were on the other side, put yourself in there, in their shoes, are you providing them with all the framework and the mindset and the, the daily conversations for them to know what they're doing? Or is this just like a internal thought of, oh, they should know how to do this? But are you actually providing them with everything that they need to be able to know what to do? You know, I, I thought I was. And t today I was actually talking to, to my head guy and I was talking to him about, you know, like uh, time limits and how long something should take. And we were talking about some of the jobs and he's like, you know, I, I thought we did a little too much on this on this one job. But it took us a little bit longer. Um, so I, I guess I just have to start there. Just I'll just restart and say, hey, these are how long the job should take. And, and you know. Uh, if we need to change these these guidelines, we can go from there. But I'm assuming you asked why he thought that, and and what what things in particular took longer. What was the decision making process on each one of those things? Because he's like, well, you know, instead of doing what the customer asked for for correction, we did you know 95 percent correction, which took three extra hours, right? So that's 
because then that's the teachable and that's where you start to develop those SOPs so that, you know, e e you know, and writing them down is awesome, but it's just so they know them also. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the, the job in particular was, was a maintenance watch that we were doing and they thought we were supposed to do one thing and, and, uh, the customer was paying for another and it was just, um, I guess you just weren't on the same page. Um, I feel like we should have been because it was all on the schedule and they could see everything there. We write it on the board, things like that. Uh, we are try you to using a, like a, like a per vehicle and Grant and Barry, you guys are running full-time shop or we're running full-time shops and Grant, you are running one, but like, are you using a yep. ticketing based system? So I mean, we don't obviously... put like invoices or anything on the car, but we have like a whiteboard that everybody looks at every morning and here's the car that's on the schedule. Here's what's getting done. Um, that's kind of what we do. So how far away and how large is the whiteboard information from the work work area that these guys are working on? 10 feet. But it's is, right, it, it's right is it written, is it written this big or is it written this big? Like a piece uh, of paper? <laughs> you gotta be within, well, if, the, if you're within the 10 feet, you can read it. Okay. So I mean, yeah. you get, you get my point, right? Like I'm, yeah. I'm trying. So when you're dealing with employees and you know, SOPs, especially, and those kind of things, I, I, you don't assume that they're dumb, but you assume that they don't know, nor will seek that information out. So like, because then you're like, look, I realized that you could not look over 10 feet and read the whiteboard. However, you are literally holding this piece of paper in your hand that tells you exactly what, and it's taped to the windshield of what you were supposed to do on this car. And that sounds abrasive and, and all that kind of stuff. But like with any employees, especially as you grow, you know, this is one thing I've talked about with a ton of companies is like, this works great right now when you've got this many employees, multiply that times 10 and tell me how, how well it works, right? That's, so I, I'm super into future proofing and process. Those are the two yeah. things. And you can't future proof without standardized process. And it, as a small business guy, you're like, man, I only have a team of four. This is a pain in the ass. This is too much. There's no such thing really as, as too much information in your shop. So guys, you guys can feel free to disagree, but yeah, I was gonna... say, there's not a better person on there than Barry because Barry was running through thousands of cars a year. And then, so if there's a guy that knows process, it's right here. Yeah, no, I do. I do. But he, here, here's the first issue that I see. All right, Mike, and, and, and don't take this the wrong way, but I'm going to say the issue is you. Okay? And here's why. You're making assumptions. Okay? You're walking into your office, making an assumption that says, hey, I'm going to assume that these guys know what they're doing today. See what I'm saying? There, yeah. There's an old phrase. Never assume anything because it'll make an ass out of you and me. You see that? Assume, yeah. as you mean. See what I'm getting at? Never assume somebody knows everything or even nothing. Whenever I work with somebody, I it, they could be smarter than me, more intelligent than me, whatever the case may be. When I'm working with somebody, I want them to understand me, me personally. You know what I'm saying? So I go at every conversation, every business move I make from a I don't care who it is. I look at them like they know nothing. And I have to educate them on everything so they fully understand me. Okay. And this is where I, I wish to God you were at Mobile Tech this weekend and heard me talk about leadership and management. I really do. Because right now, you're not managing your company. You're trying to lead it. And there's a huge, huge difference between a leader and a manager okay i literally spoke on it for what 45 minutes grant this weekend yep. um and i broke it down pretty simple the best way to describe it is a leader is good at creating things they're visionaries okay so as a leader you walk in and you say okay good job guys great this is working we're making things happen today they're envisioning everything working they're creating they're motivators you know what i'm saying a manager will come in and say, okay, guys, listen, your, our numbers are off. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. And things aren't functioning properly. That's the difference, okay? One's a controller and one's a visionary, all right? We need to make you both. Right now, you're a little bit managing and you're a little bit leading, and the two need to be separated realistically for you, in my personal opinion. And why right. I say that is because – 
you were just telling us how you're coming in assuming that these guys should know what they're doing. And then they're probably standing around for a little bit waiting on you or whatever the case may be. And then you walk out and say, hey, guys, listen, this is what needs done. And I guarantee you the moment you do that, things start flowing properly. Am I correct? Yeah. But, that, I mean, that's that's exactly, you know, they come in and, like, you know, meander around a little bit, whatever, whatever. Um, I can I can obviously understand that from an employee perspective. I did the same exact thing when I worked for somebody else. I, you know, if I started work at 8, you know, I really started about 8, 15, 8, 30, you know. But so so I, I get where they're coming from. I just am like, hey, guys, I'm, I'm paying you for the 45 minutes of three. You've been standing around for 15 minutes. Like, it, it adds up. Um, oh, but it really, it really only bothers me. It really only bothers me. Like when we're slow, like oh, during God. winter, that bothers me. That's it. Um, it should like, bother you when you're busy, when you're making. I know. Like it should never bother yeah. you. It should never bother you, dude. Here, yeah. here, here's you the want, thing. Oh. Start go, Grant. Go, Grant. Let's. Hold yeah. Let's go ahead. Now. Okay, Barry. Go. Finish up. <laughs> I want to give you one word of advice, Mike. One word. The moment you wake up every morning. Okay. Get, do whatever you do before you head into the office. Get a group message going with your team every morning. Say, hey, guys, listen up. It's great that we're alive. We're motivated. We're working. Here's a few things that need to get done right away instantly when you come in. Okay? They're going to look at that message and be like, what the heck? Like, what's going on with this guy? What, like, what, what sparked him? What fired him up? You know what I mean? But just be cool with it. You know, mm. may these guys don't make them your best friends, but at the same time, remember you were once an employee and you know how it feels to be treated. You see what I'm getting at here? Never let that go. A motivated team, in my opinion, is better than a smarter, smarter team. Truthfully, a motivated team working together can get things done. A smart team will get in their way, their own way. You see what I'm getting at? Truthfully. If you, as a person, literally show them guys some love, support, and show them that you respect them, they will do way more for you than anything. Now, my next question is going to be, how much of your time during the day do you sit in that office that you're sitting in right now? Uh, about 75% I spend out uh, in, in here, and I'll spend some time in the shop, not necessarily always working on the cars, but I do the video and things like that, so I'm, I'm out there and getting content. Okay, so let me tell you something. I What I would love to see you do in the next year is replace yourself in that office. Yep. You're not a salesman. You're a detailer. You're a hands-on guy that's good at what you do. And I guarantee you, if you go out in that shop, you took the best person in that shop and sat him down for 75% of the day. Think about that for a moment. You lost 75% of your production because you're sitting in the office. You're, you, somebody else can answer your phone calls, find a good, you know, good-looking woman, somebody that's smart, a guy, whatever the case may be. You know what I mean? Put them in that office and teach them that job. That job's easy to do. You need to be out in the shop motivating your guys, working and leading by example. If you're not serving them, they will not work for you it's a fact I'm the, just, I'm the, the only you. issue I, I have with that is i don't want to be working on the cars that's that's not my thing yeah. anymore i i did it i did it for years and like it's sure it's enjoyable it's a, no I, you know I, I did it i did it i'm, How many years? I'm 25 How many years? i'm in detail since i was 19 so i was doing and it for six for i'm 25 and doing it since i was 19 so i was in there for six years um six years. and i I'd, I'd much rather be able to to you know uh, work on the business, then work in the business and be in the shop. You know, I, I understand yeah, there's sir. definitely guys, there's definitely guys that, that there's definitely guys that will stay in the shop their entire life. And that's what they want to do. And they want to work on cars and, and breathe in all that shitty dust all day long and, and, you know, destroy their lungs. And that's just not what I have envisioned for myself. No, listen, and I hope that's true too, because I don't want you to do that for the rest of your life. But at the same time, you technically started your business last February. That's when you went full time. That's when your business started to grow. That's when you began to build your business. Okay. I'm going to be real with you. Okay. This, this ain't the internet world where you're leading off quotes and you're living your life by a quote or some dream fantasy quote that everybody wants to happen. Okay. The reality of it is 
you're a new business owner and you're going to be a new business owner for the next four years. It takes five years for you to see good results in a business. Truthfully. Okay. The thing I see 90% of the time why young business owners fail is because they want to live this fantasy world where everybody online says scale this 10 X this, do this, blah, 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 blah. The reality of the factor is you're trading time for money in this industry. That's all you're doing. You're trading time for money. It's a labor intensive business. Okay. Detailing shops are very difficult to scale. Very difficult. Usually there's a reason a good detail shop scales and another one doesn't. The reason my detail shop scaled is because everybody around me wanted to work on Ferraris and Lamborghinis. This episode is brought to you by Detailers Roadmap. Hey, spoiler alert, that's us. We all know you need a kick-ass website in order to be successful with your business. The good news is at Detailers Roadmap, kick-ass websites, that's kind of what we do. With the latest performance, designs, and SEO strategies, Detailers Roadmap is your one-stop shop to be successful on the web. And don't forget, we have the best support team in the industry. Whether you're an existing partner looking to improve your lead generation or you need a brand new website, Detailers Roadmap is here to help you be successful on the web. So go to detailersroadmap.com forward slash success and get started today. That's detailersroadmap.com forward slash S-U-C-C-E-S-S. I learned what was in my backyard and how to service it. I did dealership work for years. I didn't want to do it, but I loved it. That's what put food on my plate and fed my kids. But at the end of the day, you're going to start scaling and think you are. And what's going to happen is the quality is going to drop in the shop because you're no longer focusing on the shop. You're focusing on the dollar bill. You see where I'm going with this? You, right. sir, I'm being real. I'm being genuinely real with you. You are not ready to scale yet. Okay. The reality of it is your business does 300 grand a year. And let's just say you're able to pull 30% of that out and make a hundred grand for yourself. I'm pretty sure at 25, that's life altering money. Yeah. Everybody wants to get to a million dollars. And when you look at this, imagine a million dollars being here. And let's just say you're doing a hundred thousand dollars here. You're at the bottom. You want to jump from here to here instantly. We all do. I get it. It's self-gratification. It's money. You know what I'm saying? But imagine now if you had 10 steps, 10 feet apart, okay? To get all right, Barry, I'm going to give you like 30 more seconds to finish right, this thought. Basically what I'm saying <laughs> is slow it down. Slow it down a little bit. Focus on the quality of the shop and the business first before you scale. You need to be out there with your guys, in my personal opinion, instead of sitting in that office. Otherwise, the quality is going to drop. Guys are going to come in. They're not going to get to work right away. You walk into that office at eight, in that shop at eight o'clock in the morning, and you start working, your entire company will change in a month. If you don't believe me? Bet me on it. I'll bet you two hundred bucks. I believe you. Got to hold your end of the deal. I believe you. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to take it the other side, the other way. I do live that. Yeah, the cool. Let life. me say one thing. The cool yeah. thing about this podcast and having all three of us on here is that we all have different experiences, expertise, and opinions about the best way to approach it. And then you're going to have your own. And so let's yeah. that. So that's we got one. We got Barry's side, which is awesome and amazing. Grant, I know, is going to say all that is different. His his approach is going to be different, and my approach is probably yeah. going to be different or not. So that's that's where we come together, and let's figure this out. No, I don't disagree with anything that Barry said. There's definitely benefit to being out there because you've got to show them what the work ethic is. And work ethic is extremely important. The reality is I just did the math, but I had it, of course, obviously, because that's what I do. And <laughs> it's for them to spend 45 minutes having friendship and building relationship out there and lollygagging around the day. It's cost, unless you think that costs you a year in labor for them to have relationships with one another. A couple thousand bucks, maybe. Maybe yeah, it's eleven. It's eleven grand a year. It's nothing. Okay. So what you're trying to do is micromanage them, especially during slower season, because at the end of the day, it's coming down to your mic because the sales aren't there and the jobs aren't coming in. So you have this extra time to go out there and actually look at them, and be like, "Why aren't you getting this stuff done?" Well, the reality is because they don't have the work coming in to get it done, and the the other reality is it doesn't really fucking matter. Oh, sorry, sorry, Kevin. It doesn't really oh, yeah. matter. What's eleven grand a year at the end of the day for people to come in and spend forty-five minutes of their time 
to you it's wasted, but to them it's building relationship. Okay, so to Barry's to Barry's message that he was providing you, you being out there and showing them work ethic is super important. And the quality is, is also there too. The other side is I'm on the other side of that. Right. I've seen the other side where I've I put people in place and you have to do that as you build, like Barry said. You're scalable, scaling right now and putting seven people in place and having all these managers, it's just gonna fail. You gotta do it, you gotta do it collectively. So you going out there and saying, Okay, what's it gonna take? And is the person in this room to actually manage the shop for me, manage the guys, manage the team, making sure that they're motivated every single day, making sure their jobs are getting done. So for me, that's Jim Hutton. When Jim Hutton came to my team, I provided that job profile to him. Hey, Jim, I need you to manage my team. And what he said, what does that look like? We had a whole conversation around it. And now Jim manages the whole team. Then I moved to the front, which is the position you're in now. So once I got out of the shop and I never had that 25% of detailing went away, I didn't even have to think about it. Now the mind, your mind is completely clear and free because you don't have to go out there being like, why it, it doesn't clout you being like, why are my guys spending 45 minutes talking to each other and shooting the shit about you know the football game last night and you know they went out drinking this week and how long they were the next day? Whatever, who cares? Okay, it's costing you 10 grand a year for your team to have friendship and build a relationship. Stop caring. But now it's somebody else's job to deal with that. It's Jim's job. When Jim walks in the door, people get scared. They get very scared. <laughs> Okay. But I'm a little scared then, of Jim myself. I just tell you right me now. Me too. Yeah, me three. So I think I got seven text messages this morning about how people are afraid of the man. But it gets shit done and no one's ever left. Okay. The other side of it is the front of house. And when you move to the front of house, you're building your job profile. Okay. Now somebody needs to really start managing the sales, the customer relationship, making sure that the jobs are getting done on, or making sure the jobs are getting paid for, making sure payroll's all taken care of. That comes secondary. Now you're building a job profile up front, which you're taking on right now. You're going to take it on 100%. Then you're going to hire somebody to take that off you. Once that's taken over, then you can start running your business and actually managing the business. So basically, you're two people away. You need to hire two more people, one or at least empower somebody up and back that you're going to have to step out there, just like Bayer did say, because you're going to have to show them. You can't just be like, oh, you're now a manager and I expect you to do this internally. Okay? You're actually building a job profile around and what your expectations are for them, and you're showing them how to get it done. Okay, you actually got to be out there, just like Barry said. Then you're going to move 100% into the front of the house and never step back into that room ever again. You will not go into that garage one more time. Because every time you go back, it negatively affects the whole company as a whole. It's not your job anymore to be back there. It's somebody else's job. So if that person wants to step into your door, they can. It's not your job to step into their door. You know you're on the place. It's all mindset. Okay? Then you build the job profile up front, and now you get to live that beautiful, glorious life that you see online. That I get to live, that Barry lives, that Kevin lives, where you're like, hey, my team's working for me. I, if I need to step in and show them I, how to do it, or if somebody's out sick, I can do that. But now you get to live that life. And it's going to take years, just like Barry said. It's going to take five years. So, to wrap this all around, I learned all this through a wonderful book called The E-Myth. And The E-Myth is there. It's a very Great. simple, I think it's like 100 pages. It's a phenomenal book that really lays this out there in a very simplistic way that you can then go and implement it to your business. There's three parts of a business. There's an entrepreneur, there's a manager, and there's a technician. The technicians, the nine to fiver, walks through the door. All they want to do is see the jobs on the whiteboard, get that job done, and clock out at five o'clock. And that's for one. Five o'clock, they're gone. Because that's their job. That's what technicians are. Then there's the manager. Before I get into that, there's an entrepreneur, which is you. That entrepreneur is the one that's big mind thinking. I want to go after this account. I want to go and get that Ferrari dealership. I want to, I want to do 20,000 PPF jobs a year. I want to hit that million dollar mark. And the manager's in the middle. The manager's the one that takes all your big-minded thinking and all those big opportunities that you bring in, and that's their job to manage those and to make sure that the job gets done effectively and pass it down to the technicians to make sure that they're the middleman. The manager is by far the most important part of a business. Well past any technician because they're replaceable, well past any entrepreneur because, honestly, they're replaceable. But the manager is extremely powerful because they have the mindset of taking the big-minded thinking and putting it into action. So for you, Mike, you got to see which position you want to be in. Do you want to be the technician? Totally fine. Do you want to be the manager? Totally fine. Or do you want to be the entrepreneur? Totally fine. But you got to step into one, three of those. You can't be all three at the same time. So I would highly recommend you, you buy the e -myth. It's, like, it's such an easy read. And it really lays this out really simplistically for you that then you can input back into your business. So yeah, it's called the E-Myth e -myth Revisited now is what the actual title is because he rewrote it. He, I don't know how old the original was, but it, it's called E-Myth Revisited now and it's super easy audiobook and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, where, did I finish, you finish your thought? Yeah, that was long, sir. Me and Barry just no, no you're good. I, want, I just want to, to Barry's point, 
uh, and and honestly, to to Grant's also. And when you're first starting out, there is this like you almost have to like have three all three of those hats, and you kind of have to put one on, then take that one off, and put another one on, then take that off, and put. So it's just because you're so small, and so that's that's something that that you know is easy to fall into one or the other. I'll kind of tell you, I used to do it. So I ran a, I ran multi-million dollar health clubs right out of college. I was a trainer and then I ran huge health clubs, had about 250 employees at these clubs. And you would often see me with a backpack vacuum. I don't know if you've ever seen those things, but first of all, they're, they're awesome. But they knew all my employees. And then I would go behind the towel desk and I would go into childcare and I would go open up machines and clean them because I was an employee at that time. Like 50% of my salary depended on how well all each of those things ran. And so I, first of all, needed to know them in and out, which you already do in detailing for the most part. Um, but I also wanted to, sh- to set the standard for every employee, where they were, whether they were uh, at that time like a $7 an hour towel desk person or a $50 an hour personal trainer. Like I knew everyone's job and they, and so you already know that they need to know that I know that job. Because then that sets the standard and they can't say, well, you know, this is how I do it. Well, I don't give a crap how you do it. This is how I want you to do it. And that, again, that sounds a little bit harsh. But for you, another idea. So that's just that's just something to think about with you kind of in that transition of wearing those different hats throughout the day in your business and, and all that. And, dude, it's hard. It sucks. Like a, that, sucks. a small team of, of two to four, two to five with your company, it's hard. It's it's. I mean, I've been doing this for a long ass time and it's still really hard for me. And Grant yells at me repeatedly um, for, <laughs> for, for, for having that ideology, right? One of the things that you can do with, let's talk about this like coffee talk kind of thing. First thing in the morning. One thing I heard recently that this company implemented is like, all right, our day, we, we need productivity time from 8, p- 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. minus lunch or breaks or however that works within your company. I want everybody here at 7.30. I'm going to pay you to be here at 7.30. Your time from 7.30 to 8 is free time. I don't want you to start, you know, I you can prepare for the day a little bit, but I want you guys interacting. I want you to talk about yesterday's jobs. I want you to talk about today's jobs if there's anything you need to do. Uh, and But I'm paying for that 30 minutes. So like you, but you can spend it in a way that makes it best for you, whether it's team building or any of those things. So then you know, but, at 8 a.m., that's work time, right? Mm-hmm. Like, so that that 7.30 doesn't become, you know, that 8 a.m. doesn't become 8.15, 8.25, 8.45, you know, all of that stuff, which it can easily be. So it, it does a couple of things. First of all, they know they're getting paid to do it. You encourage it and you can control it, right? So that's a that's a controlled amount of time every single day. And, you know, some companies will do it on the back end, too. Let's take 15 minutes before the end of the day. We're going to stop our jobs at 4.30, 4.45, and then we'll, re- we'll debrief. And you can debrief as a company. You can have everybody together to do your daily debrief, have everybody in the beginning to do your daily prep. So there's tons of ways you can do that. But to Grant's point and Barry's, you need to make sure that you're building that team deliberately. Because as a young guy that's been, you know, hasn't really been, you know, the boss for very long in this case, it just takes a little bit of time to figure, to figure those things out. And I think you're doing a phenomenal job. And this is, dude, I know 50 and 60 year olds that have been, you know, CEOs and CFOs of companies, and they're still trying to figure this out. So like, don't, don't think the encouragement or discouragement or whatever is something that you're doing wrong. It's just, it's just a way you need to recognize that these are things I still need to learn. And I'm, I'm doing these things um, right, but not fully right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what do you think about any of that stuff? Don't be so hard on yourself, dude. Like you don't have to be, it's, 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 you know, the business shuts down today. You still, you still have a life. So you don't have, we're not curing. I always say it in the detailing industry that everybody gets all ego driven. It's like, dude, we're not curing cancer here. Right, yeah, like we're, we're trying to yeah. no, no one's gonna die if, if, and you know, you like I always tell Michelle, it's like I'll go dig ditches if I need to. If this thing, none of this thing yeah. works out, you're gonna be fine. Life goes on, and you're building this business so you can build a life. So when when you have that mindset, each one of those little things can be frustrations, but not like life changing problems. 
right? And that's yep. as as a young man, I had a I had you know I had that same kind of mentality. It's like everything is a thing, and you, you kind of have to get to this mindset. Well, not everything is a is a thing, right? Like you just you can meet the challenges, work through your day, work through some of these things. But you're doing a phenomenal job right now. There's just some tweaks that probably will help you to do even better. Sweet. Yeah, dude, you just gotta stop giving a fuck. That's all I am. Like, <laughs> that's another good. That's, that's another good book to read. What it sounds like. Have you read that it, book? It really is. It's called the Subtle yeah. Art of Not Giving a Fuck. It's I read the first book. like twenty. It's, a re- yeah, it's actually first, a super good yeah. book. So put that put that also on your audio book list, mm-hmm. um, depending on if you're a reader or a listener. But that's a that's yeah. a great book too. Uh, his other books kind of suck, but that's a really good book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I got twenty pages in and realized that I'm already living that life, so I just I stopped reading it. The, la- <laughs> the last time I read the ra- last time I read that book, I was sitting on a beach in Grand Cayman with with wild chickens all around me that I was feeding my that's apple awesome. to. <laughs> that's cool. So I think that's I yeah. think that could have made the book cover based on <laughs> for that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Greg. Go ahead. I was say the cool part about where you're at, Mike, right now is that your business is already there, like it's already established. Nothing's really going to change moving forward. You're going to have little thing. If you don't put much focus into it, it's going to do what it does forever. So it's it it's just the idea of how far do you want to take this thing? Like what like to what spot do you want to take this business? You can go as far as you want with it, or you can stop. I always thought I wanted the biggest, you know, take over the U.S. You know, I want 70 shops everywhere. And then I realized that I'm just content with where it's at. And I don't really need much more because it's super manageable. I got a great team. They are some of my best friends. We see each other all the time. They still know the vision. They still come in every single day when I'm out in the middle of the desert in 1976 Airstream, they're there laying down the codings and talking to customers and still living the dream. Okay, so it, it, it gets to a point where I was almost like, ah, I just don't feel like doing it anymore. Okay, and that's totally fine. It's not that I gave up on the business because I didn't, because when they need me, I'm there. Still the solution is at the end of the day. Just I replaced myself completely because I realized I didn't want to do the day. I didn't want to have to go out in the shop and be like, why are you guys not working? Right? Because internally, I was like, everyone should be working and doing 100% all the time. And then I realized they're my friends. Like, do I really need to push them to be 100% all the time? No. And then, you know, they don't leave. Nobody quits because I'm not out there. I'm going to do them every single time. I'm not out there just punching them to the ground and be like, hey, come on, get to work. So I just stopped caring about it. And the reality is the same amount of work gets done that it would if they have an extra 45 minutes. So, and, and so, Grant, I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure that, I'm sure that you're, um, that this process from that to where you are now took what, three, four months? Not even, yeah, it was quick. <laughs> yep. It was quick. Years. It takes years. Yeah. And honestly, I wish that I were, three, uh, you yeah, know, three, I wish, three I wish I was way ahead of, ahead of the game from where I am. And I've been at this thing for 25 years. So maybe I shouldn't be on this podcast, but, um, no, yeah. Should. So <laughs> you said, so you had two it things. Years. It was, you said you had two years, two things, right? Weren't you about to say two? You said oh, you were. The e myth was one of them. Uh, well, no, well, like at the end when I did when I interrupted you, you said you were about to say there were two things. Maybe I'm maybe I'm trying to read your mind. So, yeah, this is, this is part of his 1976 Airstream Hiawaska trip that he's been that yeah. he's been on. There's, so there's definitely some things in here right now that are, that are playing with me internally and externally, and I'm not really sure why. <laughs> so so where are you at, Mike, yeah. with all this? I'm just I'm interested to kind of you know because each time we beat you up a little bit. Uh, we're trying to beat you up a little bit, but trying to encourage you with just like drill sergeants here, you know, so uh, a little bit. And so like, where are you at? Tell, give me a sense of what you're thinking. Make sure you ask questions, um, you know, kind of how how can we best help you given everything we've given you for the last 55 minutes? You know, where where can we go from here in order to serve you best? I mean, I, I, honestly, I'm just looking back at you know, still, still again, thinking about, about our growth year over year and, and seeing how the team has grown and you guys are hitting the nail on the head, like really good. I should just, I shouldn't care about the, you know, 15, 20 minutes that they're, they're hanging out doing whatever they're, they're just being guys, they're doing their work. It's fantastic quality work that comes out of there. Um, and like I said, I don't, I don't want to be in the shop. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll help wash a car. I'll help polish if I need to. Like, you know, if I need to step in, I will. Sure. But I don't want to be out there. Uh, I want to focus on 
I want to do the social media, honestly. Um, so I guess my next step is trying to hire somebody to take this role of answering the phone and things like that. Um, so I just got to figure the out. Most important role. Yeah. yeah. Most yeah. important role. I, I got to figure out, you know, somebody that can you know, answer the phone and generate leads and not just be going off the same, you know, you can go on Orbis and see all of our leads and see our clients and all that. And you can call them all day long. And if they don't answer and they never call you back, you know, the lead is dead and this and that. So um, there's only so many times you can call somebody before they just say, hey, like, you know, don't ever call my phone again, things like that. You know, customers don't like being called a hundred times, no matter how many times you're going to follow up with them or, or, or all that. So, um, yeah, I just need to find somebody to find, find somebody to take this spot in here and I can just chill out a little bit for a little bit and then figure out my role from there. I want to do social media. I don't want to be the front end guy. Um, so I just got to find somebody for that spot. You're probably a year and a half out when a person steps in that front seat with you. So yeah. you're, you're, there's no, there's no chill for a couple of years. Right. No, no, yeah. I didn't, I didn't mean, I didn't mean like right now. I meant like, you know, <laughs> you I, mean, I, I want to, I want to, I want to be the, able to rest of the afternoon. I want to be honest. able to take, I want to be able to take face. two weeks off this week. <laughs> instead, of, I, I want to, Barry, be Barry to was getting after that speed <laughs> bag real quick, about ready to come at you. All I meant, all I meant is I want to take two weeks off a year instead of one. That's it. I want to just double. That's it. When you said, I want to, I want to sit back and chill. Like yeah, when you said that, and I'm oh listening. God. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm like, I wish I could have like reached out and just grabbed your throat, <laughs> like right here, and like strangle you a little bit. Put your hand on the the, here, here's the thing. I I know, Mike. I come across <laughs> abrasive sometimes, and I'm okay with that. Other people have to accept it. It's just who I am. You know what I mean? Um, but the reality. That's why we is, get along, Barry. That's yeah, why you and I get along so well. I agree. You know, I'm good looking. He's not. Somebody has to make up. For <laughs> right. But. Um, in all seriousness, Mike, you have a huge foundation right now, and you you built something that is really respectable, and I commend you for that. Okay, I really trust me, I do. I think it's awesome, but at the same time, I I, I think when we get into this industry, and you look at the online bullshit, the realm of online bullshit. I hate to say it that way, but it's the truth. Everybody's a philosopher. Everybody's an influencer. Everybody's a leader everybody's something on the online world because none of us ever show the bad things that happen in our life. We always show the positive on social media because that's, that's the conception of social media. The reality of it is though, your business isn't social media. The reality of it is your business is cleaning cars and making money at the end of the day. Yep. Social media is just a tool to help you pull those leads in and get your name out there. That's the reality of it. You know, um, but when you look at your team right now, you you got four guys. Your business grew over 50% in the last year. Tremendous. Tremendous. Kudos to you for that. Seriously, I mean that. Technically 64%. 64%. There you go. I was waiting for Grant to tech, make it technical on me, but thanks, Kevin. <laughs> I appreciate that. I got um, you. Uh, I have my calculator pulled up right now. I was the, doing it. The, the reality <laughs> of it is, though, those who are good at business will always see those increases within the first year or two. Those who are yeah. not, this is where you separate the men from the boys. The boys will fold. The good ones will move on and do what they do. But eventually, that 50% is going to plateau out because otherwise we'd have billion-dollar detailers and not detailers doing a million dollars a year. You know what I mean? So it does. It's, that's it. No other way to say it. Unless you put another shop or put 30 bays in your, you're, you're going to be a limited potential income in the detailing at one point. You know, how fast do you want to get there and how do you want to get there is the thing. In my personal opinion, in my personal opinion, that's it. Take it for what it's worth. Have fun with it, okay? I think Grant was right when he said it's going to be 15 months to maybe even 24 months until you're in the position to where you want to be. The 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 heart, the heart, one thing that scares me about what you said was my guys come in here, they kind of do their thing, blah, 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 you know? I like Kevin's idea of saying, hey, we get here at 7.30 instead of 8. I don't like the idea of doing it at the end of the day because as an employee, if you told me that, hey, my end of the day is 4.30, but we're going to hang around to 5 to talk, chit-chat, I'm going to tell you to pound sand. Because I don't want to yep. talk chit-chat once my job's done. I want to do that before the day, not after. That's a good point. That's a good point. That's, I valid. To me, though, that's just personal. <laughs> that's it. You know? 
but you're at, you're at a point now, I think, where it's really critical with what you do and the decisions that you make. Because the decisions now, you're either going to grow or you're going to maintain and just grow a little bit. Make sense? Regardless, you're going to grow. What I would like you to see is, truthfully, I'd like you to take some time to yourself, okay, and think about certain things in the business. Two things. What are you happy with and what are you not happy with? I, I know I don't want to get into stones because then we're going to be here for an hour with Grant talking about this <laughs> list of crap that he's going to break down for you. <laughs> 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 the, the reality of the situation here is, man, you're, you're doing well, okay? What you we are. tell you is you just are. advice, but at the end of the day, both Grant and I have both been there in two different ways, okay? Just like Grant, I had a shop that did over a million dollars, and that was without ceramic coatings, without PPF, without vinyl, to give you an idea. That's how I did it, okay? But wow. Grant did it as well. When I made a million dollars, I had like 20 grand in my bank account. I was one of the best people you'd ever see at moving money and not collecting it for myself. <laughs> Everybody else was getting it, but at the end, I wasn't. You know what I'm saying? And this is why I'm trying to help you because I don't want you to go through that, truthfully. I, I truthfully, I, I, I genuinely mean it. I'm happy when I see others succeed because this industry has blessed me in so many different ways. I want everybody to be blessed the way I am, truthfully. But I really think you should do more leading by example versus managing. There's a big difference. And if you can't think about it, if you're confused, please call me. I would love to help you to get through that phase. I'm pretty good at leading and managing. I'm a better leader than manager, but I can make things happen. But that's the one thing that I'd really like you to see a step forward and be a part of your group. Get out there with them. Get your hands dirty a little bit. You know, show them that you can do it. Because I'll be honest, somebody comes to me and says, hey, Barry, this needs done. I don't have the time to do it. And I'm doing it. I hope to God they know how to do it if they're telling me how to do it. Make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. You are the business, Mike, right now. You are the business. That's it. Your employees are employees. Build the camaraderie. Build the teamwork. And eventually, they will be the business, and you will be the owner. And that's where we need to get you to be at. You need to be the yeah. owner of the business. Well, well said, Barry. Makes sense? Well said. Yeah. I hope it does. That's I the really money do. shot. But truthfully, I, I'm proud of the things that you're doing. I think your numbers are on point. You know, your business seems to be doing well. While we were talking, I scrolled your Facebook page. You know, I've seen that you, you, you know, you're working on some cool stuff. You know, you're obviously you're having fun with, you know, the GT3 I've seen on RS, the blue one or something. I get it, man. I love those cars as well, you know. But at the end of the day, it's a business. It's not about, you know, what's the coolest car or who's got the biggest dick. It's about money at the end of the day. It's about money, and I can tell you want a lot of it. You're almost there. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be. I'll send you the so, link to your new backpack vacuum that you need to buy so that go. you can. Uh, We're talking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now, now that we have the thing, Mike, we, we went over a lot of things. What was it? Maybe those a few kind of like implementation side of things and what, what you should, you know, what what are some of our recommendations for this? Have you, have you implemented most of what we discussed? And if so, how are they going? All the the questions when a customer calls me, I've implemented those. Um, there's just so many people that want to call me and they say, hey, I want this, and they want to be off the phone in five seconds, and I, I don't do that anymore. I, I just don't. Okay. It's not it's not my game. So I want to take some time on the phone, and you're gonna you're gonna answer my cool. questions before we go past anything else here. Like if you don't tell me where you found us, I'm gonna pry until you tell you say Google, Instagram, whatever. You're gonna, I, I gotta know. Um, I do call people now a lot more often than I did before. I don't do like the call every day and then call once a week and this and that. Like I'll call them, I'll call them every day for the first like five days. And I, then I get the hint. I'm not going to waste my time calling you once a week, every week for you to not answer. Um, so I'm, you know, I focus on the, the new leads that come in and if you're not interested, cool. then I understand that's, I don't take it personal anymore. Um, I definitely was taking stuff personal a few months ago just because I knew we were going into the winter time. I knew it was going to be rough. And now we're coming out of winter time. It's 50 degrees today in, in Chicago. Uh, we're feeling good, and um, people are just being a lot. People are being a lot nicer than they they were a few months ago too. It helps a little bit. 
<laughs> not freezing your ass off helps your attitude. Yeah. Don't do that right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When it's negative thirty outside, no, you know that phone was not ringing at all. It was not a phone. Well, when it's negative time. thirty and the Packers, the Packers put a beating on the Bears, fortunately nobody wants to call. Nobody's happy. Easy now, yeah. easy now. I'm a Bears fan a little bit. Relax. <laughs> Relax. I knew their coach. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That's pretty cool. Actually, yeah, yeah so- I know. Like, yeah, I'm actually a big fan of the Bears. Well, I was. I was actually. I grew up with Matt Nagy. Not that you're you're, you're happy with him, but. You know, as a Barry, if you look up Bears fan in the dictionary, there's literally a picture of you. Like that's yeah. there, there's there is there is painted some, stomach and everything. There is something yeah. so stereotypical yeah. about you being a Bears fan. I just, I Dude. can't even I can't even help myself right Do now. Do I look like Chris Farley or what? Is that what <laughs> the Bears, the Bears. Mike Ditka. I'll give you I'll give you Mike Ditka what? instead as a as a. Come on now, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like... I got your Chippendales tape from last week, by the way. <laughs> hey, Kevin, can, Kevin, can you do, can you do this in your shirt? There you uh, go. Wait. Uh, oh, yeah. here's here's a really quick funny story. I have this jacket that is was the correct size, but I did that once, and I literally ripped out the entire seam on on both sides. So <laughs> you got to be careful with cheap clothes. Basically, yeah, is what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. It has nothing to do with my lat and pec implants that I have. So uh, <laughs> I don't know how to handle those. Do you really have pec implants? Of course. How do you think I get these? I'm not working out. That's hard work. Yeah, max out man it's all yeah, Bo- it's all about botox implants and filters that's that's the well, secret that's the I, I secret I'm, a model here, so I'm a five here. i'm a five two guy that looks like a troll in real life this is all I, cgi I and they, ai don't worry about that models from the 90s kevin you know what i mean they, they were a little light on their loafers you know? i'll send you a picture that's uh yeah that's a whole nother story for another podcast but <laughs> Uh, so w- w- where are we at? I think, I mean, so you implemented the calls. What about your FU this, F- FU list and, uh, those three columns? I mean, I, I know we're, we're wanting to know a little bit about that to see whether or not we're on the right track with that kind of how you're, cause the idea is over time to take those last two columns and continue to move away from those. Um, and if your column, if the first column says social media and everything else says F you that, then we're going <laughs> we're gonna to have a little bit, we're going to have a little bit of a problem, I think. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so a lot of the shop stuff has gone into the FU category where I don't want to, I'm not going to mop any, I don't know if need, if I need to, I'll mop the shop, but I'm, that's not my job. Um, my job isn't to wash and prep the cars anymore and things like that. That's just not what I want to do anymore. Um, yeah. other than that, I mean, that's really, that's really the only thing that I've implemented. I'm, I'm still around the shop and I'm still doing things and I'm, um, you know, but as far as the FU list and things like that, just just the shop, the shop stuff is where I focused most of it on where I didn't want to do anymore. That's cool. That's cool. Gentlemen, what else we got? We're running, we're uh, running about what we ran yeah, Mike, last time. Yeah. So it's going to be, I would love to catch up with you in like August after, you know, once things pick back up to see where the business is um, for you, dude, it's really, you know, the biggest thing is to to give it time. So even on this conversation, it's like, well, you know, a couple months ago, it was like this, and I expect it to be like this, like even with the customers calling you. It takes so long for things to actually shift to be consistent. There's micro shifts immediately, but for things to actually become consistency, uh, it takes time. So for you, dude, it's just be cool with it. Sit back, relax, enjoy the fucking ride, dude. 50% growth in a year. Again, we looked, you know, we were looking at different times, like your full time. Now it's really going to say, okay, how of 2023? What's 2024 going to look like for you? Which brings you to my question. What's your revenue goals for this year? Uh, my revenue goal is 500,000. Just simple. I want a, I want an attainable goal. I know we can hit that. Um, I want to pay the guys more too. So we're going to do a little bit more um, of that too. So 500, cool. 550 attainable goal. That'll, you know, still good, good growth. Um, but I don't want to go, I don't want to go to, you know, I'm not gonna say, hey, I, I want to make 800 grand this year, double my my uh, um, income up a little bit. We'll see if he comes back. Am I good now? Yeah. While he, while we're waiting for him, what's the 61 percent that it says on the bottom of my screen? That's your upload because you're out in the middle of nowhere. So when we're done, just gotta um, leave it on. When we're done, just put your mic and your camera on mute and leave it. Um, okay. Oh, okay. Hey, you back? I'm back. Yeah. Okay. We so lost okay, here we go. We, lo- we lost we go. you for a bit. <clears throat> I don't know. Right, so we, question again. So yeah, 
Go ahead. So, Mike, so 2023 was obviously a great – or it's, wait, it's 23. Yeah, I'm going to redo that. So 2023 was obviously a great year, but what's your revenue goals for 2024? Uh, like 500 and 550. I want something attainable uh, that I know we can hit. Uh, it's still great growth and it's something I'd be comfortable with, but I'm, no, I'm not going to strive for 750, 800,000 this year. I, listen, eventually, sure, but it's just not going to be the – you know, I don't think it's going to be this year. If it happens, fantastic, um, but we'll – We'll reach a, a plateau at one point where we can't fit any more cars in the shop. We can't do any more work, things like that. So um, we'll get there when we get there, and we'll cross that bridge when when it happens. Well, it's less than forty two grand a month in revenue, right? So I mean, you're you're yeah. uh, you're on that precipice already. One thing I want to say, Mike, is when you say five hundred to five fifty, that's a major difference. It's almost five thousand dollars a month. It's like twelve hundred bucks a, a month or twelve hundred bucks a week difference. A fifty thousand one coating. Bucks. Exactly. It's one coating, but the reality is it's 52 coatings. Okay. So when you say 500 to 550, really isolate that number. And then ask, your, and ask the question to yourself, why? The biggest question is, okay, because that 50 grand, it's like, oh, 500 to 550, it sounds great. But the reality is that 50 grand is a big, that's a 10% difference, right? When you're looking at 500 grand, that's, that's, that's huge. Okay. I hope you just say, hey, I want to hit 550. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot easier than say, and then having that range because you'll be comfortable at five hundred. Don't don't be the comfortable. Make it a little uncomfortable so that you're still you and your team are still pushing for something. Okay, but five hundred grand. If you hit five hundred grand this year, that's awesome. That's huge. That's great. Let me yeah. rephrase. When you hit five hundred grand this year, that's gonna be mm. huge. Yeah. And, and I gotta say, Mike, I was waiting for you to say I want to make a million this year. To be honest with you, <laughs> um, but I'm so glad to hear you say five hundred thousand. Because I'm a believer that smaller goals are easier to achieve than larger ones. And eventually that larger goal you'll forget about because you've had so many awesome smaller goals that you won't even realize it when you hit that larger goal. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, again, so yeah, kudos to you for that. That's that's a big, it's a good goal, but I do agree with Grant. There is a big difference between 500 and 550. I do agree with him 100% on that. I would tell you, you know, what did you say you did last year? 260, I think you said? Uh, right so, uh, 2022, we did uh, 130. What did you do in 2023? 2023, pull that back up, where did you go? It was, of course, I can't find it now. It was 430. Yeah, 430? 430? Yeah. Make, make your goal 550, to be real with you. Yeah, yeah, make that it's easy. Put that put that five fifty down for a goal. I, I I think you'll I I'm positive you'll hit it. Very positive you'll hit it because it's your second year in business. So you're you're still going through what I call like the the pink cloud phase where everything keeps growing and growing and growing until you hit that plateau. You know, um, good job. Five fifty is a great goal. I think you're going to hit it. And you're going to do well. And I think in two years from now when we come back to this. I think you'll be in a different position in life as well to where you'll yep. feel more more self-gratification for the hard work that you put in. And I think you'll have more time for yourself and your family as well. You know, I don't know. I don't know your family situation, but that's important as well. Don't forget about yourself. I'm, yeah. I'm a prime <laughs> example of somebody who put in 12 to 16 hour days and forgot about himself because I always yep. put everybody else around me first. And you can see some things in my, from Kevin can tell you, I mean, I let my body go, you know, 10 years. I didn't care. I chased money. I chased whatever. The one thing I forgot was Barry Thiel. And now I'm working on Barry Thiel to give you a heads up. Yeah. That was my nice. biggest mistake in business. Yeah. Don't for sure. forget about yourself. I mean that. Do not yeah, forget about yourself. A hundred percent. Good, good point. Good place to uh, land this plane, so to speak. We're going to try to come back, Mike. I think we're going to try to get all three of the of the first shops that got on this and kind of do a, a round table. So we'll have we'll have yep. all of us on here. Um, Sweet. Probably a couple more months, maybe three more months to give us um, even longer because we want to make sure like to, to Grant's point, get into the summer months a little bit um, so we can kind of get a get a feel of where that's going. And and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So uh, any and part you of guys words, get to yell you guys at us. Yeah, there you go. You can say, look at you guys. What are you guys doing in your business? Yeah, so. Losers. Yeah, we're over here doing <laughs> businesses. You're just talking. Look at you. You're, in the, you're over there in an Airstream. What are you doing over there, huh? Yeah. And, He's, uh, uh, it's uh, because he is now um, semi-retired, now 
re-employed. <laughs> I was retired. Bit, yeah, and on I vacation. Was retired until, uh, yeah, until Michael Evans <laughs> called me and said, hey, buddy, I need you. I'm like, all right, I'm coming. Yep. I, I, I unretired myself. I was retired but for to that, two weeks. To that point, like that's Grant has built a successful business to allow him to make those kind of decisions to say, hey, I don't really have to, but I, I really want to do this because it looks fun. I talked to a guy at MTE, and he he basically took his company public and retired at 31. He's close to my age now. And he said, I literally should put on my business card, I do whatever the F I want. That's his, yeah. that's his, that's his job title. And, um, so yeah, so, you know, we're all working towards that. We're a little bit, uh, longer in the tooth than you are, but the good news is you get so much time and you're so much farther ahead than I was personally when I was 25 years old. So, uh, yeah. uh kudos, kudos to you on that. Keep doing great things. So, Hey guys, this has been awesome. I look forward to talking to you again. I look forward to keeping up with you on social and, and everything else that you're doing. Barry Thiel, Grant Menard, Michael DeAndrea. Thank you very much for joining me. If you guys uh, want more information about Detailers Roadmap, go to detailersroadmap.com. Find us on all the socials, and uh, we'll talk to you about SEO, awesome websites, and everything else on the interwebs. Let us help you today. Thanks, guys. You guys have a great day. Head over to detailersroadmap.com and get your one-stop success solution today.